If you are a beginner animator looking to improve your character animation skills, this tutorial is for you. I have been animating for eight years now, and as you probably already know, there are some type of character movements that are very common for explainer videos. So today you learn one of these movements, a character typing on a PC. I will walk you through my entire process from start to finish, and you can download my project files to practice on your own. Hey guys, so today we will be creating this character animation in After Effects. It's a pretty simple animation and we will be using Duik and joysticks and sliders. However, I already have this design that I will import into After Effects. So keep in mind that some of the techniques that I'm going to show you in this tutorial would be strictly for this design. You can download my project files in the description and you can follow what I'm doing. But keep in mind that depending on your design, you might be using different techniques to accomplish the same thing. So let's get started. The first thing would be to organize my files. I already imported my character into After Effects and now it's time to do some parenting and I'm going to hide some of these layers. The first thing would be to hide all these layers from the chair to the background because these are the background elements. So I'm going to just pre-compose them and I'm going to name that BG and I'm going to lock this layer. Then I'm going to select the laptop and the desk and I'm going to lock these layers too. Then I will start my parenting. So everything from the ear to the beard would be parented to the head. The, the back hair would be parented to the head and the head would be parented to the neck and the neck to the body. Now what I'm going to do with the hand would be to duplicate this layer and then I'm going to pre-compose it. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to be creating some uh, motion with the puppet tool, but I'm going to show you how you can do that later on. For now, just duplicate the hand layer, then pre-compose it and then parent it to the forearm and the forearm to the arm and the arm to the body. And now I'm going to repeat the same process with the other arm. So I'm going to pre-compose the hand and I just realized that I named that head instead of hand. So let me rename it. Now parent the hand to the forearm, the forearm to the arm and the arm to the body. And I'm just going to hide these layers because I don't need them. And I'm going to click this icon so I can see only the layers that I'll be working with. So the next thing now would be to create some nice uh, face rig and I'm going to be using joysticks and sliders. And by the way, you can check this tutorial that I'm going to link here. Uh, this is a tutorial for how to rig a face with joysticks and sliders. So it's a way more detailed tutorial, but um, I'm going to rig the face here anyway. So I will start by creating a shape layer from the eyebrows that I have because I'll be animating the path of these layers later on. Let me delete these two layers. And um, now I am going to select everything from the ear to the back hair and I'm going to click P on my keyboard and add a keyframe for the position. So as you probably already know, the way joysticks and sliders work is you basically have to create a few positions of the head and then you can use joysticks and sliders to create your um, joystick. I'm, I'm going to start with the base position. I'll actually make some adjustments. I would like my base position to be like this. I mean, like the eyebrows need to change a little bit so it looks a bit more natural now. Okay, and then I'm going to add keyframes for the pad, for the eyebrows, and I'm going to select these layers and click huge so I can see all the keyframes. Let me start creating the other positions of the head. The first position is always the position where the character is looking right. Let me first move the head. Then I'm going to select everything from the mouth to the eyebrows and I'm going to move everything like this. Don't worry about the beard for now. We are going to be creating a mask later. Okay, great. Let me move the ear. One important thing about joysticks and sliders is that you have to have keyframes for every position, even if this layer is not moving. Just make sure you add keyframes everywhere like this. Let me just adjust the eyebrow a little bit here. Okay. I'll click G, adjust the path, and I am going to adjust this one as well, like this. Okay, great. Um, and now I just want to go back and adjust my 
base position. I just want him to look more straight at us rather than uh, to the right. Okay, great. So now I'm going to the um, next frame. I will select all the layers, go on the third frame and click Origin from Joysticks and Sliders. That would copy paste my base position. And now let me create the other position. He needs to be looking left. So for this animation, since he won't be actually looking left, it will be more like in the middle rather than um, to the left. So uh, I will just move these layers like this and the ear as well. And again, don't worry about the beard, we will adjust it later on. I'm going to repeat the same process, um, click origin so I can copy and paste my base layers. And now he needs to be looking up. So move the head a bit. Now select all the face layers, move them up like this. Now the ear needs to go down and the back hair can go up. Okay, so now let me select the eyebrows and I'm going to move them like this. And I'll adjust the path as well. Every character is different, so your character might um, look different. So play around with these settings. Now the last position would be uh, when he's looking down. I'm going to repeat the same process. And now uh, I'm going to move the head down. All the face layers would go down like this. And the ear would go up like this. and the back hair would go down as well like this okay so now my eyebrows would go down as well and i'm not going to be adjusting the pad for this position okay great and since i accidentally stopped my recording i'm just going to, to show you what i did with the beard i basically converted the beard into a shape layer i adjusted the shape and then I alpha made it to a mask that I created. And this mask, let me just show you, this is how the mask looks. And I made sure that the beard and the mask are parented to the head. So now that we have everything ready, I'm going to select all these keyframes. And in my joysticks and sliders panel, I'm going to click on this icon over here. I'm going to name it face, click OK. And my face rig is ready. Let me test it. Okay, as you can see, the beard doesn't go outside of the face, which is perfect. And my character is looking good. Now, if you want, you can adjust the nose as well. You can do a bunch of different things, but my character is looking good for this tutorial. So I'm going to keep it that way. Let me select all the face layers except for the head and I'm going to hide them. So uh, the next thing would be to use Duick to rig the arms. So make sure you have your hand parented to the forearm and the forearm to the arm and the arm to the body. Now, uh, the first thing would be to adjust the anchor point. So make sure the anchor point is uh, at the center and then perform tests. So um, as you can see, I typically what I want to do is change my anchor point and then click R on my keyboard so I can uh, see the rotation. And um, that way I can make sure that um, that it looks natural and the body parts connect properly to each other. So, okay, so this one looks good. And now I just forgot to turn the arm to the body, so I'm going to do this now. And now I'm going to select all these layers, so the hand, the forearm, and the arm, and I'm going to open up Twig and click Auto Rig. And, okay, I'm ready. This rig looks good, so uh, I'm just going to go back and hide the forearm and the arm. I'm going to repeat the exact same process with the other hand. But as I pre-composed it, it's actually just down here. So let me just move it. And now I'll start with the forearm this time. I'm going to change the anchor point. Uh, okay, so this doesn't look good. Uh, I need to adjust it a bit more like this. Okay, now it looks good. Let me move the hand. Uh, I'm going to flip it and change the anchor point and move it a bit. Yes, this doesn't work. So, okay, great. Okay, so this, this one looks better. We won't have so extreme movements, so I think this one looks good. 
all right so i'm going to select the hand the forearm and the arm and how to break them with jig this rig looks great as well so let me go back hide the forearm and the arm i just want to organize my composition a bit better i am going to open up my hand pre-composition that i created and i am going to make some adjustments here so first let me create a mask i don't want to see the thumb so i'm just going to create a mask and click on this button over here so i can invert the mask let me duplicate this and i'm going to pre-compose it the reason why i'm doing this is because i want to have just one layer one pre-composition where uh, i have all my layers so you'll see in a minute and now what i would do is basically create different masks for each of my fingers i'm going to duplicate it create another mask with the other finger and so on and so on until i have all my four fingers in a separate layer and the reason why i'm doing this is because i'm going to be creating an animation with the puppet tool later on uh okay so uh, i'm ready i have all my five layers one is the base and the other four are the, the the four fingers uh let me isolate that and i'm going to create a puppet i'm creating three dots like this um, actually this layer needs to be here let me isolate that and I'm going to repeat the same process and same here okay let me select all of them and click U so I can see all the keyframes I'm going to easy ease them by selecting them and clicking F9 now let me go back to my composition actually I would like to create the first movement before I animate the fingers uh, because I just want to see when these fingers are going to be moving. So I'm going to create keyframes for the position and rotation for the hand controllers. I'm going to um, add a keyframe for the position for the face joystick. And let me move the anchor point of the body here. Yes, the head is okay. So for the head, I'm going to be animating the rotation only. And for the body, the position and the rotation. Actually let me hide these layers let me select all the keyframes and easy ease them like this and let me start animating um okay so first uh my body would go down then i'm going to copy and paste the keyframes from the start and i'm going to change the rotation he'll be leaning backwards uh, now the head will be rotated as well and the face Yes, uh, it will be like this. Actually, let me move these keyframes a bit. Uh, this time, the uh, the arms will go up and down. And don't worry, we will offset these later on. Uh, let me adjust the rotation uh, here and here. And here, uh, I'm going to change the rotation as well. Okay, uh, so let me plead this. Okay, so this is really slow right now. Let's adjust the timing a little bit. Let's offset these keyframes because we don't want these actions to happen at the same time. Yeah, so this is how it looks. Okay, great, looks pretty good. Now let's animate the head. So I would like to uh, make the fingers move as if he's typing on the um on the laptop i'm going to zoom in in my timeline and now i already have keyframes for all these puppet pins what i'll do is just animate them and move them around so i'm going to speed this part a little bit but essentially i'm just moving the puppet pins so it looks like he's typing and the important thing would be to try to move every finger uh, every time there is a um, there there is a keyframe, so it looks a bit more realistic. Or if you want your animation to be more subtle, you can just move just one puppet pin at a time. This all depends on how you want your animation to look. And then I basically just created four movements, and I am going to copy and paste the keyframes, so it looks like he's typing for like three seconds or so. And this is how the animation looks. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. So now let me go back and see how that looks. Okay, so at this time he starts moving his fingers. I will now animate the uh, arm uh, again because I want the arm to be moving, not just the fingers. So 
basically here I am adding keyframes for the position and rotation. This time the, the hand will go up and rotate and then I'm going to copy and paste these keyframes but then move it backwards like this and essentially here I'm not following a like a um, like a template or something or a reference I'm just adding keyframes based on how I want the animation to look um, like small movements uh, short keyframes there isn't any rule or anything um, at least I don't follow one it's just more about what looks good uh, with the current uh, animation that I have of this character so essentially I'm adding keyframes for the position and rotation for this arm um, but make sure you don't add huge movements because it looks just too uh, head trick and it just doesn't look good small movements are better so for typing animations but of course if you want to make it look more cartoony you can add huge movements and offset the keyframes this is again based on preferences okay so I think this one looks good I'm just going to add one more final movement and it'll go up and now it'll go down like this and just one more goes up and one more goes down okay so this one looks pretty good to me so now it's time to animate the other uh, arm and basically I'm going to follow the same exact process just moving the keyframes around moving the handle and just making sure it looks good and realistic make sure you don't make your both of the arms do the same thing at the exact same time because it looks a bit robotic And I'm ready with the arms. I think it looks pretty good. So moving forward, I'm going to add a few more keyframes for the body, the head and the face. So uh, yeah, so at this time, I want him to lean forward and rotate the head a bit and all the face layers, I hate when this happens, uh, all the face layers would go up so my slider would go up again i need to adjust the timing this looks too robotic and at around this time just animate the face joystick i want him to look down like this and let me move the the head because it looks disconnected from the body um, all right, so I'm going to add one final movement and the body will just go backwards a bit. The uh, head would rotate and I want him to look a bit up like this. Um, all right, so I think our animation is ready. So we are almost there. The last thing that I want to do would be to offset the keyframes. So typically, you you might want to play around with these things just for the sake of time here i'm going to select all the keyframes for the head and the face and i'm going to just move them same with the rotation keyframes for both arms i just want to have a bit more smooth movement so the rotation um uh, would be offset it a little bit like this okay so we're ready with this animation i hope you guys like it if you do please make sure you like comment and share this video thank you very much for your time and see you next week